Hi guys, welcome along. Nigel here, Nigel's Modeling Bench. And yes, I'm starting another build. Yes, another build. So to save you commenting down below, um, I'll say it myself, I'm starting another build. This is going to be a one-off video. This is going to be a one-off video on building this Thunder Model 135th scale British 7.2 inch howitzer gun to go behind my R100 Scammell Pioneer. So I've had a quick look through the instructions. Um, Sorry, if you are new to the channel, welcome, welcome along. Please give me a like and subscribe down below. Uh, there's lots and lots of videos to watch on the on the channel. There's lots and lots of videos in the playlists, so you can go and see a whole stream in there of a, of a complete build if you want to. There's a couple in there, and um, if you're a beginner, then there's also like the Monty's Humber would be a good one for you, and uh, and also this one would be quite good as well, I expect, because um, it's a fairly simple kit. There's a few small parts that would drive you crazy. But um, it's not a very, very in-depth kit with millions of parts. It's only got four sprues and two of those are the same. So, you know, um, and watch along. And uh, if you're interested in your British armour and you want something to stick behind your, um, you know, your Matador or your Pioneer, then this is going to be a great little addition. And I've just read in the history, this this gun was actually started use in World War One as an eight-inch gun. And it had different wheels and obviously a different barrel. So, um... Yeah, they, uh, they downgraded it to a 7.2 inch, which gave them better accuracy, and um, and they actually changed the wheels for the balloon tyre type. So, there we go. So, as I do with all of my kits, and I think everybody that into models should pick up this as a tip, what I always do is look through the instructions, and I look for assemblies that are going to come and catch me later on. So, for instance, when we get to here, we've nearly finished, and the last thing is to put the wheels together. So we've nearly finished, we want to get it all done, we put the wheels together and we find they've got to be clamped and left overnight to dry, and there may be a bit of seam work to deal with or whatever, um, although I doubt it if the scammer wheels are anything to go by. So I'm going to glue these together first. So I go right to the back of the instructions and I'm doing what's at the end, I'm doing first, and I'm just going to glue these three wheel parts together so that they're there ready when I need them rather than having to hold the build up while I'm waiting for this to dry. The other thing I'm going to do is put the barrel together okay and I will cover this because some people seem to struggle with barrels and stuff they always want to be having um, the uh, the aluminium or brass barrels or whatever you don't need them you can use the plastic parts you can get a perfectly good job if you follow some really really careful building techniques and some and some good sanding techniques you can get a lovely job um if it does turn out to be a bit of a mess like if the parts are like this exaggerated so rather than being a circle if they're like form an oval i may well turn up an aluminium gun barrel myself so i'm going to put the barrel together and i'm also going to come along and i'm going to glue these two parts together here what is going to be eight because there's four of each and these together here now if someone can tell me what they are i'd be interested to know somebody i know many of you out there are going to know exactly what they are they're going to be like this is the um this is the armament and then this is the pillow the, the cushion or whatever that goes behind it or something i'm i'm sort of i'm afraid i'm very sort of ignorant towards all this armor stuff so please let me know in the comments below i'd love to know what they are and we've got with this one here it's got these this photo etch strip going over the top there and with this one here, I'm not going to be doing that one now because it's a slide moulded part. I'm only wor worried about parts with seams and that one's going to get turned, flipped over and have a seam, uh, a, a seam, a handle put on there. So I'm guessing this is the charge and that's the powder bag or whatever. I, I don't know. So, um, yeah, normally you, you would start by doing all this first and then get into the chassis. So what I'm going to do is that and then I'm going to get into the chassis because we don't need all of this yet. I want to get the chassis done, have that all clamped up and let that dry overnight. So, um... I'll come back with you in a minute if we, when I do the wheels. If I if I come across anything while I'm doing the wheels, I'll video it. If not, then we'll move straight onto the barrel and I'll show you the wheels done. Right, I've glued the wheels halves together, um, well halves and the centre section. They fit together absolutely beautifully. And as you can see here, if I show you close up, you get that lovely rib tread going around. And they are lovely. So, beautiful fit on them. Uh, a bit sort of hollow and, <laughs> and uh, light, but... Um, you know, somebody did ask me in one of the comments about how I actually make the tyres bulge and what you will find generally on World War II vehicles, certainly the lighter stuff, uh, they don't tend to bulge. You look at the, the big trucks and stuff, the tyres, they have very, very thick sidewalls. You look at Jeeps, they don't tend to have bulge tyres. Um, they're, they're, they're very rigid, so they stay sort of round when they're sat on the ground. 
So there we go. Um, now I'm gluing these together, these, whatever they are, these things. So we've got C5, C7, and those are these here. You can see we've got those there. And then we've got C2 and C3. And what they've done on these parts, and I'll show you on all of them. Excuse my blister if you can see it. Um, here we go. So you can see that what they've done, they've got a, let's get you close up. There's a raised rib all around the inside of one half and a recess in the other. And unfortunately that's actually forcing the parts to misalign. So that when you put these together, uh, you will see that they, they don't line up end on. Well, this one does actually. So obviously there's error in the one part and not in the other. Because my other halves, no, they don't line up, you see. It's actually forcing them apart. So, and also on the other ones, I had a, a it was forcing a misalignment longitudinally as well. So the thing to do, I often do this anyway with location pins and all sorts, is just come along with a knife and shave these away. Okay, cut away from the inside. Just get rid of them because they're, they often are a hindrance and I would rather be able to align the parts myself and um, rather than have the, the kit manufacturer do it for me. You often find this with uh, like on drop tanks and stuff and on bombs on aircraft and cylindrical stuff like this. You often find the pins, <clears throat> the location pins will actually force you to get the parts wrong. So come in there and we're going to just sand away what's left of it. You can see like a white line around it and then when the white line disappears then you know you've you've sanded it all away. So we'll do that and then we can come along and glue those halves together. And you can see now that we can slide them around and we can get them positioned exactly as we want them. What I do is come along with a drop of glue on one end and just glue one end like so. Hold it together and then with a pair of tweezers, say it's out like that. Okay, you can come along with a pair of tweezers and you can just come along and, and squeeze it so that it's so that it's cylindrical again. And then once that's done on one end, you can hold it lightly in your fingers, come along with the glue. Brush some glue down the seams. Get that capillary in there. And then again, using your tweezers, you can just squeeze it around until you end up with a cylinder. And it's so helpful having it as a cylinder because it helps very much when it comes to the sanding and everything. And you just, you know, you're going to give it a very light white with a sponge or whatever. And it will be job done rather than trying to fight with it and end up with an oval egg shaped cylinder. So there we go. And it's basically the same for these little parts here. So I'll get the rest of them done and then I'll get onto the gun barrel. And I think some of you might want to see that. So uh, I'll do that on, on camera. So we're going to look at gluing these um, barrel halves together. And I thought I'll cover this in the video. And then people who are new to the hobby who are sort of frightened of, well, not frightened, but um, run away from stuff like this. I mean, I. I it's to me it's just part of the the, the, the hobby of modeling it's it's making two parts look seamless and like a cylinder without you know spending money on aftermarket so it can be done so the first thing to do is all about preparation it's very much like painting your preparation needs to be spot on so what I'm doing is first of all I've got rid of all the sprue nibs and I've made sure I'm not worried about the sprue nibs on the surface I've made sure because some of these sprue nibs go onto this face. But I've just made sure that everything is flat. Now if you want to double check, what you can do is come along with a magic marker um, or probably better off using a pencil because magic marker will stain the glue. But I'm just very lightly marking this, as you can see. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is with a with a known this I know this sander is flat. And I can just sand over the the barrel, and what I'm looking for is all that pen to disappear. Now you can see here we've got a low spot because where I'm sanding, where I'm sanding there, we've got 
you can see where it's been sanded around the outside we've got a low spot in the middle so I'm not going to worry too much about that but I want to make sure that we've got a continuous line of sanded material all along this edge see we've got a spoon over there we're going to break off not a spoon of a ejector pin tab we're going to break off again we can see on the on the back end here just sanding it to make sure it's flat so we don't end up with any gaps and this is how you glue these sort of halves together without worrying about using fillers and stuff or hopefully not worry about using fillers so there we go so that's that half done and then we'll do the same on this half just put some lines on here As I say, I don't worry too much about the sprue nibs on the outside surface because we're going to be sanding that down anyway. And if you sand them off now, you run a risk of touching either side and you end up putting like a flat on it. So you're better off um, you're better off just leaving it until afterwards. So again, here you can see we've got this low spot again there. Now this tab here sticks out. You can see this half doesn't have that tab on it. So this side of the both sides of that tab will be exposed to the outside world. Another one of those ejector pins in there. And there we go. That's that all done. So we can see we've got, we can still see the black pen down the inside, but along the outside edges, we've still got, we've got a sanded clean area with no pen. So when we put these together, what we should find is we get a, a very nice flat join with no big gaps or anything staring at us. And there we go. So that's our preparation for getting all glued together. Now, there's different ways you could do this. You could come in with your Revell contact contactor and run down there. Um, it's no good. It's pointless. I see people doing this all the time. It's pointless painting's extra thin on there because by the time you get to there, what was there is dried. So you can do it with a thicker glue if you want to. So you could use like the Mr. Cement Deluxe or there's this one here, this Tamiya glue here, which is quite thick. Um, I think what I'll do is come along first of all with this Mr. Cement Deluxe. And I'm going to hold it like this so I don't get my fingers in any marks anywhere. And I'm, as you can see, I'm putting it on quite heavily. Basically because I don't want it to dry before I get to the other end. You can see because it's a thicker glue, it's slower drying, so it remains wet for longer. But it's still not staying very wet at this end here, the the um the firing end. So we just put those together and give them a little squeeze. Okay, and we're just going to get them started and get them glued together like that. Okay, so that's them kind of bonded together. So we can put this glue away now. We're going to, not going to use that one anymore. So I'm now going to use my Mr. Cement S purely because it has a bigger brush and you get more glue when you uh, get the brush out. So I'm going to apply some glue in that seam there and let it go in. We can also put some down in there. And this applies to this. what I'm doing now. This applies to drop tanks, gum barrels, um, Pretty much anything really that's made of two halves. You know, another big one is on your on your model trucks, your fuel tanks. Okay, give it a little push together and the glue will ooze out. Being careful not to touch the glue joints. What we can also do there is get the brush and put it down inside the barrel. Make sure we get plenty of glue down in there. And what this will do is reactivate any of that glue I put in there that dried, the glue I applied before I put the halves together, anything that dried out, this will sort of reactivate it and reinvigorate it, get it going again. Or reinvigorate it, should I say. Okay, so I'm not worried about alignment or anything initially, I'm just getting these together. Okay, and I just want to make sure that I've got some nice, well glued together joints. So we don't want gaps in there, that's what gives us lines. 
oops, I've got some glue on my finger there. It's capillary around that joint, look, and I've touched it, so that's fine. Right, so there we go. That's that barrel glued together. Now we need to start looking at getting our seam good. So the way I do this is what with little, what little bit of fingernail I've got, I run my fingernail across the joint. And what I should feel is a step on both sides. And that'll be where I've put the two halves together and the glue is oozed out. Okay, so that's what I want to feel is a step on both sides. If I feel a step on one side only, like here, my finger's sliding across there easily, but that way there's a step. So that means that this side is lower than that side because there's a step going that way. So I can just give that a little tweak. And then here, I've got a step both ways. Here we've got a step both ways. And if you find that you get a step on one side and not the other, it's best to work towards the top. If it's now I'm not sure how this goes. It looks like the seam's down either side, it's not down the top. So what I would do if it was that way. I would favour this seam over that seam because the top is obviously more important. Unless you're going to display it firing and then you want both sides really good. But this side, this has the seam on both sides so we need to make sure that both sides are uh, perfect. And I do actually want to use my extra thin here. I'm going to put some glue in there. Looks like I missed that bit out. Okay, so give it a good squeeze. And if you are really worried about, you know, having dry joints or whatever, you can come along with a with a paintbrush, like so. Take a paintbrush, put that in the glue, and then run down the inside like that. And that way, you can you could sort of make sure that you've got at least some areas covered, and you know that it's uh, well glued. Okay, so that's another little thing you can do. All right, so once we've got it aligned and we know that everything's lined up, the temptation now is to put close pegs on there. One of the problems with close pegs is if you put them on like this, it's not so much of an issue. But if you use the round part of the close peg, if they're not perfectly aligned, they may actually pull the parts like this. They pull them apart. So be very, very careful if you're using close pegs, which is why I tend to use rubber bands, because they will self-center everything if you like if they're good and tight if you've got them on there really tight like so that was clever what's going on here <laughs> right let's get it on there good and tight like so There we go, like that. That's on there nice and tight now. And that will actually have the effect of actually pulling it together. So if it was out, it'll actually pull it back straight because it's applying equal pressure all the way around. So I'll do the same back here. As you can see, I'm making sure they're really tight. Now these rubber bands came from a supermarket and they are junk. When I come back to this tomorrow, they were probably snapped off. I'm just going to roll that up there and that will get some real good pressure going in that area there. Okay, so that will hold that together. And then we'll do the same on the very back end. And then we can just leave it to dry. And we really want to be leaving this for 48 hours. 24 hours, whatever, we have got quite a lot of glue in there because as I've said so many times before, if you if you do this too quickly, you'll have it looking lovely and then you'll come back a couple of days later and the seam will reappear. So uh, let the solvents all soak out, let the glue harden off nicely and then we can start sanding it. So I will show you that bit in uh, another part of this video because this is a one part video. This is going to be a full build. What we can do is put a close peg on there just to help that go together and in fact I'm going to put another close peg on that close peg just to really get some get some uh, 
weld action going on in there. So we can just check these seams once more, make sure we don't have any silly steps in there. Yeah, this, this part here, this side, is slightly smaller than that side. And I mean, we're talking a couple of thou, we're not talking very much. But it's just made, we need to make sure that we've got it centered. I've got a step that way, and no step that way, and I've got a step that way, and no step that way. So one is slightly smaller than the other, so they just sat like that. Make sure you get them nice and even, because the seam, as I say, is either side. If it was top bottom, I would get the top right and let the bottom be wrong. But um, you can see when we look at the end of the gun there, you can see that everything's all nicely evened up and round. Okay, so it's uh, it's that simple, and then of course the big thing is going to be sanding it. We'll get some Mr. Surface and we'll drill this out, make it look all nice and smooth and cylindrical, and just make it look like one piece of plastic rather than two halves. Okay, so doing this step here, um, oops, drop that part. Now this step here, step two, building up this main chassis. I'm going to do this bit here, and I think I'm going to pack it in then. Um, but um, you notice you've got this part here, A10, that goes between these two halves. And you've got these square cutouts in here. But if you put one in here, you, the first thing you notice is these square cutouts are kind of off center. So you need to choose the best orientation to get it centered within that pattern of bolt holes. But then when you come to put this other one on, you will find that it doesn't line up. So on one half, you need to remove the kind of square and turn it into a a round pin so that you can turn the actual um, the actual rod within the within the hole if you like so we can do that and now we can now we can completely turn that so that's okay so we can turn this now so we get it nicely in there and then we can fit this on and then look at it so that it's centered around the bolt holes now we can actually get it all lined up look and, and glue it in properly um, but as the kit comes in the box unfortunately you can't do that so it also looks like it may be oops if I, I think I've dropped pretty much every piece of this kit tonight it looks like it may be a little too wide uh, let me see Yeah, that's supposed to slot in there like that and then you've got this piece here which goes in the end so I'll get it together and then I'll come back and tell you how I managed it. Moving forward <clears throat> I've got the chassis now all glued together and just as they say in the instructions uh, they're delicate work carefully glue short sections check and fit and joints through the whole step so I've glued the forward area to or the rear end I'm not sure if that's the front or the back um, area together here so that's all nice and sandwiched up and I've actually glued it all together down here as well. And I haven't glued these ends down because the next bit is going to be putting these end plates on. So I'm going to glue it all together then. Likewise, I haven't glued it along here because if I find it needs to be moved in or out or whatever, then it's easier to do it all together rather than try and, you know, just deal with one side because we've got these tiny little stepped flanges. If I can get it to focus, I'll show you. We've got the tiny little step flanges where the parts fit. So there we go. Now a little mod I'm going to do is something that applies to all models really. When you get these holes that are representing, um, you know, punched holes in sheet metal or whatever, it's good to uh, enhance the effect. So what I'm going to do is use this uh, little ball cutter, okay, and come in from behind and thin the plastic out so that we end up with a thinner section so it looks like a thin sheet of steel rather than something too thick. So I'm going to come on my Sharpie and I'm just going to use the Sharpie to make a mark in these holes. Okay, so what we're doing now is we're actually colouring in the edges of the plastic around those holes. Okay, and then what we can do is use the, the black we will see as we machine away the the plastic the black should become to a thin edge so you can see now in there we've got the the black the black on the edges so if I come along and work on this one first if I just 
remove some of the plastic. And I know that I normally say don't use Sharpies and stuff, but this is going to be all dark brown and weathered and everything, so I'm not really too worried about it coming through. And what we can do there, you see, is just thin it out. I'm going to put some more in there just to try and enhance what I'm trying to show you. Right. So now you can see you've got that black edge there. You can see there is much thinner than this one next to it. Okay. I'm going to carry on and take a bit more out just to thin it out a bit more. There we go. Now I've got a thinner edge there. So when it actually, when we finish, when it's all painted and everything, it'll look like a much thinner section than it really is. A little bit more realistic. And this works for whatever it is you're doing. It always looks good on chassis and stuff like that. So a little tip from noise there just for you to uh, carry forward to your models and make them look good. Looks good like especially the undercarriage doors and everything like that and on your aircraft and stuff. So there we are. And as you can see there, it looks a lot nicer. Look at that side. Got this thin section. When you look at that side, it's all thick. Okay. So I've been aimlessly gluing bits of plastic together here and um. Thought it was about time we had a bit of a catch up. So this is all together now. I've got a rubber band here holding this back end in. Um, this piece here, it, it sort of wants to sort of splay out, so it's just pulled in a bit. And uh, like I say, just make sure you do a little bit at a time, glue a little bit at a time, and uh, make sure it's all staying square and lined up and everything, and you'll be good to go. The fit is actually very, very nice, but you do need to take your time. This isn't like Tamiya would probably make this in two halves and just slot it together. Um, this this isn't like that at all. This is uh, it's very for, for someone like me. I, I enjoy building. I don't enjoy the painting side of things so much. I enjoy the building. It's a very enjoyable kit to build because it needs a lot of care and a lot of forethought on how it goes together. It's not something you just pick up and and throw together as it were. So yeah, that's um that's a lovely little assembly. All the nice corners there, on the top and the bottom. We'll probably go with a bit of mist servicer and give it the alcohol treatment, and uh, that will be that'll be that sorted. Then we've got this here. This is part of the recoil mechanism, I think. Um, this kind of goes underneath the gun, um, sits underneath the barrel. Now, this again is a beautiful little assembly and it's a bit misleading in the instructions. There it is there, and it's actually that. It looks like it's sort of this long, doesn't it? But it's actually, it's uh, in, in perspective, it's uh, it's quite long. So you've got the, the side pieces going on here. There are ejector pin marks inside this end in the sides which need to be got rid of to make this panel here fit in nicely. Um, there are little legs, these tiny little feet on the bottom of here, I don't know if you can see, and they go in holes in here, but the, the, the holes are too small for the legs really, so I just sanded the legs off and um, then I was able to align it all by eye. Then basically you've got these two sides here that go around this little bulkhead which is down in there, and this centre piece here glue them in together and then let that sort of go off so it's all sort of fairly hard and then glue one side get it all nicely lined up again with your fingernail because you've you've got a, uh, a joint there you've got a joint there where the sides actually meet the bottom here okay so get that as nice as you can then if we can just get in there with a sanding stick and clean that up afterwards that'll be nice without having to uh, worry about fillers and stuff and um very, very nice little assembly. And then this piece here, you can see it's B24, telling you it slots in the top with no glue, and that just sits in there like so, and you push that in, and that is part of your recoil. And the gun barrel is gonna sit, as you can see, you've got these two cutouts here, that's gonna sit in there like that. So that's that done. Um, so we'll leave that out for now. So that's all cured. I've got the sides of the main chassis cut off there, so they're good to go. I've done some sanding on these, whatever they are, things, and I've got these two parts here. These are A12 and A5. I've got those cut off and cleaned up, ready to go on. Um, and I've also built up the hook, the tow hook. Or is it? Here it is here. It's a nice little assembly. We'll have a bit of seam work to do on the top there. 
but that goes together in two halves and then that I believe is gonna hook into there like so okay and then this is gonna sit on the top of that like that so it's all gonna look very very nice when it's done see that's gonna go in there like that. it's all gonna look lovely and uh, very very highly detailed with lots of bolts and rivets and all sorts so that's that bit done um, and then over the page here we're looking at adding in the the raising lower mechanism so we've got B19 and B3 and B2 and B18 I've got them together there's quite a few ejector pins or lumps inside them to take off uh, to, to make them go together properly and also they need you need plenty of clothes pegs for this model make sure you glue them together and get them pegged I would suggest pegging them first and then put the glue in and that way you don't get the glue oozing out because along here we've got these riveted panels Now I need to do some research but I think they're supposed to be flat so we may end up sanding all that off and then flatten it out and then put some rivets on or um, what I might just do is put some mister surface in the middle and a bit of um, alcohol mister, or uh, mister colour leveling thinners on a cotton bud sand that out, job done so um, that's where we are with that and that's a good couple of hours work oh this piece here A2 and A3 doesn't fit together particularly well um, A2 has a sort of recess in it that A3 sits into but it's A3 is a little bit too thick so I sort of just carved away bits of corners and that and got it to go together nicely so that's all sitting nicely no clamping or anything just get it together but just get it as neat as you can and we can run around afterwards some filler sand it all out and that'd be lovely and that's underneath anyway because that is going to sit in the back of the actual chassis like that so you're not going to really see the underneath anyway so there we go um and these are going to glue on the inside of these panels here it's going to go in there like so so that's your main sort of mount for the for the gun okay so there we are i'll see you in a minute when i've done some more moving forward we've got the gun barrel here now with the, the pegs removed and i've put some mr service around this joint around the um I've forgotten the name of it now. Breach. <laughs> um, and then we've got the uh, side mounts here. I've cleaned them up on the bottom edges. And on the top edges, you can see we've got the rivet detail on there. But we've got a seam down the middle. So um, Mr. Surfacer in there. And I'm going to go over it with some, um, some Mr. Cutter leveling thinners on a cotton bud. And take that out and sort of try and get rid of the seam without removing the rivet detail. Uh, same on that one. The seam around the bottom of there, which I've just put some Mr. Surfacer in, so we'll sand that and clean it up. I'll give a quick scrape and a sand around these joints along here and on the insides. And then a brush of brush full of Mr. Surfacer down there. We'll let that go off and then we'll sand that back and hopefully that'll be all nice and smooth. Um, and also here, where this chassis is assembled, I've painted the inside with the SCC2. I can't remember the mix right now. Go back and look at my, uh, back in like 2018, I tell you the mix for this. Um, it's all Tamiya colours and um, SCC2 and then you've got the SCC1A. That's just the brown and black. So that one is just XF10. Uh, I think it's five parts XF10 and one part XF1. But if you go back and look at my Scammel videos from 2018, it tells you in there. And here you can see, remember I was telling you about with magic marker it always comes back through the paint you can see there you could spray that again and it would just come back through so that's why I try and avoid using it um, especially in external areas but I sprayed inside there in brown and also the insides of these side pieces so that when we actually put it all together what we actually see is this so it's a lovely these parts fit beautifully in here um, so when you look inside that chassis that box section, instead of just seeing the the grey plastic behind, we actually it's actually brown and dark in there rather than uh, bright grey plastic. Especially if you're showing your models and it happens to be in the right place underneath a light or something, um, then it will look bloody awful with the nice grey plastic showing through. So always worth painting inside. I could have done it black, but I thought I may as well just do it brown. Um, so there we go so I'm going to glue these sides on now and as I say with uh, I'll do the same on these as I did on the front in fact that is the wrong side that's why that was uh, it fitted beautifully even though it was on the wrong side look at that um so there we go um you can see how good a fit this all is I mean it's just it's it's really really nice if you take your time and you know do it a bit at a time 
like I say, we'll clamp that in there and get that to fit in there nicely. Um, and you know, just as I said, do a bit of time work your way down. You could use the Tamiya extra thin quick set in cement so you can work a little bit faster if you want to. But um, you know, we'll start here by gluing in the back end and then we'll just work forward. On the back here, I'm gonna have to do something about the rivets because they're quite pronounced. You can see on the box front here, you can see this is this area here, they're quite pronounced, they're quite visible. Um, whether it's being towed or, or in action. Um, so I'm going to have to do something about those rivets. So uh, we'll look at that in a minute. Um, I say in a minute, it's going to be in a minute for you, but it's probably going to be like two or three days for me. So it's amazing. Some people have commented that they think this would be a nice weekend build. I'm not... If it was a Tamiya kit, it probably would be, but... You know, you, you could throw it together a weekend and paint it and everything, but you really want to be taking your time and, you know, glue that there, let it dry, and then move along, glue a bit more, let it dry, and just really, you know, work on something else in between. If you if you want to have a day behind the bench, do that bit, put it to one side, work on something else, or, or pick up another part of the kit. So I'm going to go on now and get these sides glued on, and then I'll be back. Okay, moving forward. Um, lots of sanding, lots of Mr. Surfacers. I've got Mr. Surfacer all around here, we've got Mr. Servicer on the top. We've added this um, plate here to the front, and not all the back. It's the front of its toe, and it's the back if it's firing. Um, and, and basically, it goes together like a dream if you take your time and you make sure you get everything lined up before you start adding glue. So uh, yeah, it, 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 as you can see, if I show you close up, it, it, it does look really, really nice, and it fits together beautifully. There's no Mr. Servicer or anything on that. That is just literally plastic glued together. So uh, yeah, very nice indeed. So as you miss the servicer along here, which is ready for the the cotton bud and alcohol ready to, to take that off. Um, I've gone around here on this, uh, the base of the gun part, I guess it's the recoil. And um, yeah, it's looking lovely. A couple of comments I've had um, are sort of nice weekend build, nice simple build. It's not a simple build. I wouldn't say it's a weekend build either. It's um, it's it's quite an involved build because of the way this chassis and everything goes together. You want you want to do a really nice job of it. You need to take your time, do it a bit at a time, let it dry. Um, I mean, this is my third day working on this now, so um, you know, in between other things, I'm not just working on this, but uh, it's not um, it's not it's not like a a Tamiya weekend build sort of thing. Um, so. There we go. Now, if you remember a little time ago, I talked about uh, trumpeter instructions and being very, very careful how when you move through, things just suddenly appear. So this here is the recoil mechanism. Okay, so that's all gone together and ready to go. So we go over the page and we're going to add these side mounts, the, the swiveling mechanism, the, the raising mechanism, onto the side of the uh, recoil. And if you can see here, we've got the sides going on, we've got the base, the lid, we've got the front plate going on, and then we've got this, this sliding part on the top, which, which is not glued so it moves, as you can see. Then we go over the page, la -da, we've got these plates on the side. So we've now got to find those plates and glue them on. It does look like um, they've keyed it here so that it only goes one way, which is a nice touch. So we may, we won't, when we find the parts, we know we won't get them wrong. But um, yeah, this is this is what I'm saying. This is what happens with these models. Um, you know, you, you're going along nicely there, and all of a sudden, boom! There, there's those two mounting pieces there, and they're um, they just they just appear. So I'll get those on now. Um, get some more bits and pieces done. And I'll see you ready probably next bit you see is when we we'll do the um, the gun barrel. Okay, it looks like I was wrong again. They're not keyed. They're actually C parts. So they're identical because there's two C sprues in the kit. And they are part number C19. Okay, and they fit like a dream. If you look at this, they you can hear it sort of slot in there. It's almost like a snap fit. And there we go. That's those in there. Job done. So you can just take some of the, uh, take some extra thin. Brush it in down there, brush it in down there, make sure you don't get any on our sliding part. Just put plenty in there, let it capillary down, job done. Okay, so that's that bit done. 
Okay, another part that's just miraculously appeared. This uh, back panel here, that part there, that's A31. So we've got these two here, C19, and this one here, A31. That actually took quite some fitting on my kit. The, the actual um, slots underneath that the hinges go into were actually narrow, so I just had to open them out a bit. The actual tabs on the back were too... Um, sorry, that's dirt from the Land Rover. The tabs on the back were too wide, so I sanded them off, and it was still quite a struggle to fit. So, uh, yeah, cut the tabs off, just sand the back of, the, of this part flat, and then open up those um, little slots and it'll fit in beautifully. You know, it's 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 a lovely fit once you fettle it, but um, you know, it's what modeling is all about, is a bit of fettling. And uh, if it all just fell together, it would be, for me anyway, it would be quite boring. Okay, moving forward as ever, and uh, got the frame here. Um, noticed a couple of comments left today um, in the review of this kit. And yeah, rightly so, somebody said, um, you know, make sure you keep the chassis straight. Well, that's to me, that's just obvious. So sorry, I didn't talk about it. But yeah, make sure you keep the 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 actual frame. Make sure we, when you peg it all together, and that make sure it's all flat, so that it ends up squared or twisted and everything. If it does get a slight twist in it, it won't matter. But um, you really want it to be all sort of flat and square, really. And that was what I was saying. Take your time, as the instructions say. Glue a little bit at a time, and then you'll be okay. Another comment was lovely kit, but you have to sand all the rivets off to clean up the seams. Um, you don't. This is something I always do and I'll show you now um, what I do about seams when they're among rivets. Now we've got a seam down the middle of here and I'm sure that in real life this is just a single plate with rivets. I don't know if you can see it if I show it close up. Um, these are basically two halves glued together. So down the middle was a seam. So what I've done, I've flooded it with um, uh, Mr. Surfacer, which is this stuff here, Mr. Surfacer 1000 I've used, and then I'm going to go over it with a cotton bud with Mr. Cut 11 in thinners and remove the excess. Now you'll notice this isn't an ordinary cotton, this is your ordinary sort of Johnson & Johnson cotton buds and they're quite soft. This is a Tamiya cotton bud and they tend to be a lot harder. So obviously what I want is something to remove the excess from the surface but not go down in the groove. So hopefully this will do a better job. Because unfortunately there is quite a, a groove there. It's not there's not a gap, it's just the top edges of the plastic kind of have a radius on them. So there's quite a gap there. So you just wet it. Okay, and let the uh let the Mr. Surf let the um thinners do its thing. And then if you just rub it until the plastic appears. What you should end up with is a nice join with the with the middle joint gone, or the gap gone, should I say, or pretty much gone. But you've still got all your rivet detail there. You haven't sanded anything away. So there we can see. If we look close up, we can see we've got plastic showing through now. But we've got a sort of flat-ish centre line. So <clears throat> if we need to, we can do some more work on that. But um, just remove the excess. And then if you have an ordinary cotton bud lying around, just to soak up the excess um, thinners. There we go. So, uh, yeah, that's looking a little bit better. It's not perfect. What I may have to do, if I'm going for perfection, what I may do, if you follow my U9 build, you'll see that I use some of those um, micro scale, I think they are, micro mark rivets. And what I may end up doing is sanding this down and then using those rivets on here to uh, to reproduce the rivets so they can get a perfectly flat finish. But um, when I say flat, I don't mean dull, like flat as in matte paint. I mean a flat, a flat surface. We go just remove the excess got some excess up here we get rid of that there we go so yes yeah, it's, uh, it's a bit better 
um, it's not perfect we'll see how it looks under a coat of paint if it does look bad we'll have to sand it down flatten it out and then we'll put some um, decals on there some rivet decals but uh, there we go I'm not sure how prominent it is I think it probably is quite prominent on the finished model yeah you've got there they are there look so uh, they are quite prominent so hmm we shall see so anyway and the same thing goes for these if you these seams here with all the rivet detail if you just wet that with the Mr. Cutter leveling thinners and just rub away you can remove all the excess and just leave the Mr. Surfacer behind to fill the gap just like so if you look there close up in this area here where my thumb is you can see we've got a nylon perfect joint there and if we do have to do any scraping or anything to remove any raised edges we will so there we are guys that's how I do that without removing any rivet detail okay so two segments ago I promised I would show how I'm going to deal with this uh, barrel and um, get it sort of all nice and round and not have any flats on it so and a couple of people have said they're looking forward to this so there we go right <clears throat> First of all, we'll get these rubber bands off. I can't believe they didn't snap. These are the cheap rubbish things you get from the supermarket for about a pound a bag. In the UK, that's about a dollar fifty. And uh, they're normally you 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 put them on there and you come the next. Oh, there's one there. That's that one snapped. Normally you come to them the next day and they've snapped. That one has. So um, I'm just going to get under there with a knife and just cut that one away. There we go. So that's that one gone. I can go in the trash. And then I'm going to cut this one as well, rather than try and roll it off. There we go. Okay, so now I've got our, our gun, our barrel glued up. Let's get all this out of the way. And you can see I've been putting Mr. Servicer in the end. I've put uh, Mr. Servicer around the back end, around the breech. So um, that's all good. But at the moment, we're only interested in the actual barrel itself, the cylinder. So I've got some sprue nibs on here. I'm just going to cut them off. Remember I said I don't worry about taking the sprue nibs off when they're in halves because you run the risk of putting a flat on there. Now, the biggest mistake most people make, they come straight in with a sponge and they start sanding with a sponge. And I believe that is not the correct way to go. I use a hard stick. This is a 400 grip. It's a bit worn, so it's more like a, a 600. Um, it's an Infini Matador, which is a brilliant little sanding stick. And the reason I use a hard stick is at the moment here we've got a step. So we've got a glue oozed out, we might have a bit of a mismatch or whatever. If you use the round stick, what you will do is just sand either side. And a hard stick will take it off. If you can imagine, if, if this is what you're trying to sand off, you can see here that when you sand, the sponge will go around it. Okay, so it'll just all it will do is whatever's sticking up, it will it will soften it. Whereas a hard stick, it can't deflect, so it has to take it off. Okay, so that's why I'm using that. Now I go at about 45 degrees, and I just go like this, just gentle strokes. Don't go piling in and start sanding everything, because then you will end up with flats. And if you notice, what I'm doing is sanding. Okay, now this is the way, I'm showing you now the easy way to do it. The correct way to sand something round, or file something round, it, most people try and go like this around it the correct way is like this okay that is the correct action but it's an action that's quite difficult to grasp so what I'll do is I'll just show you the way to do it without having to pick up any new techniques or anything okay so literally just wipe the seam clean okay so I'm going square there and then I'm coming to 45 degrees and I'm literally just I'm going around the tube as I said before, this is the same for a drop tank or a bomb or anything cylindrical. Okay, and what I've got now is still cylindrical. I'm turning it on my fingers and I can't feel any flats. And the seam has gone. Okay, now I'm going to do the end. Now, what I would advise when you're doing, when you want to get something square and flat, keep turning it. And only sanding, well, don't go like this, just sand in one direction. You're less likely to... Um, end up you know making it round so there we go so that's the front face done and the main part of the barrel so now I'm just going to get into this corner where the seam was and just make sure that there's no seam there I'd rather have a flat than a seam in there ok 
Okay, now again, we've got this area here which is raised. Just brush it over that. Now, we don't need to sand here because that's a part of a, a bracket of some sort. But I'm just going to get into those corners and I'm going to turn it over. It's just going to, we've got, this is conical, so we'll do this bit first. There we go, and just there we are, and then we come on the back here. This is straight. We got a bit of a sprue nib there, so we'll sand that off. And then again, here this is flat, so we can just sand that flat. Okay, and we'll sand the front face of that. What I'll do is come in here with a knife and just take some of that Mr. Servicer away just to make it a bit easier to sand. I'm going to go square in there. You can see there's a shiny line there up to the right of the seam. Okay, so just going to keep sanding until that shiny line disappears. If you remember, we had a slight amount of mismatch because one side is slightly smaller than the other. So we're going to get the same here now on the left of the line. You can see we've got a shiny line there. That's okay, that's fine. Okay, I'm not going to do any more on there. So there we are, that's that done. Now I'm going to come along with the 400 sponge and just go into the corner there and just gently sand over it while turning this. And this, what this will do is take away any, like if I sanded and managed to put a bit of an edge on there, this will take it away. Just like so. And then follow up with an 800. And then just, just take the sharp edge off the front. And there we go. And you can turn it in your fingers and you'll feel it if there's any flats on there because it'll feel like a D shape. But um, turning that now, I can't feel anything there at all. And we can see we've got no seams. I'm sure you close up. We've got no seams to worry about. There's nothing there. There's no flats, nothing. So as you can see, you do not need to go wasting your money on aluminium barrels and stuff. You can get a perfectly good job with this, with the plastic parts. It seems to be something that everybody's scared of these days. But you don't need to be. The other thing to remember, of course, a lot of these aluminium or brass barrels, they're heavier than the plastic parts. So, you know, you've got to think about the strength of the, um, the actual mounting, the gun mounting. Will it take the weight? If it gets knocked, will it snap anything else off? Will it actually sit in the correct position or will it just droop down all the time? Who misses? So uh, there we go. And I've got to sand the back end, but that's all just straightforward, normal modelling stuff. It's just flat. I'm going to sand that flat like so. There we go. So that's our barrel, all done and sanded. We'll get a coat of primer on there and uh, when we do everything else, so we'll see how it looks. We're gonna just get into this conical area here. And again, just smooth out with the 800. It doesn't need to be like perfectly smooth. You don't need like 1,000 and 1,200 and stuff. You know, in fact, a bit of a rougher surface helps the paint key. But um, here we go. Okay then guys, so jumping forward a bit, here we go, this is the um, this is the gun finished, the howitzer, and uh, yeah, basically, well, pretty much the building is finished, so it's ready now for, um, 
for painting and weathering. And um, as you can see, it's going to be quite difficult to get all the weathering done and all the, the um, camouflaging and everything because it's all together. So um, really, I should have left it in sub-assemblies, which is exactly what I did. The only problem with this model uh, I've found so far is this here. I think I have something to point with. This aiming mechanism thing here, I think this is what it is. It kind of wants to touch the tire. It's um, as soon as I touch it, it will fall off. But um, it, it kind of wants to touch the tire, so that's something to look out for. I think we may cut some plastic away from the mounting to make it sit in a little bit further, because obviously because of the the dish shape of the tire, the further in it goes, the further away from the tire it comes. So I think that's something I might do, um, and I would suggest you do the same. I'll show you that in a second. But um, yeah, really, uh, you've got these little photo etch parts down here, which are a treat. They fit beautifully. You got your brass wire in here. I use brass wire at 0.5 mil. I didn't actually use the uh, supplied wire. Um, lots and lots of tiny little pieces, lots of rivet detail. Um, something that is a little disappointing. It looks as though the wheels, it seems to be a theme with Thunder models. The wheels seem to be, seem to suffer. Um, you know, the, um, I believe all the uh, the Canadian uh, Chevys. I think they they all need need resin wheels. I know that the Scammels, the the wheels in them aren't particularly clever. Um, you've got the the wheels in the Mirror Models trucks, which don't go together very easily. Um, and then you've also got the the wheels on the tractor. I think he gives you uh, he gives you option to have resin wheels for that. And then this one here, if you look on the front of the box. You can see there's some some rim detail here with some bolts going around it's obviously a split rim and you can see that these rims if i just pop this one off you can see that these rims are, are very simple when you compare it to when you compare that wheel to the to the drawing it's not um it's like there's a piece missing almost so um i'm guessing somebody's done resin wheels for these probably thunder models so yeah this is all going to come apart so uh, I, I have actually left it in sub-assemblies. So this here is that aiming mechanism I'm talking about. You can see it's beautifully detailed. Um, but it sits on this pin here. This pin here. Okay, let me focus. Come on camera, focus. This, sorry about my nails guys, disgusting. This pin here goes in that slot there so i think if i shave some material off the front of there that'll make it sit in a bit further so i think that would be a good move um these are the actual wheel mountings obviously this is all the photo etch on the uh, front end i was talking about and around here all i did was the the mr servicer with the cotton bud as you saw and i also did the top one of the same one here uh, and then this will pop off this will just give it a little give it that out of there give it a little twist and it'll come out we go and then if I give this a bit of a pull apart then the gun will come out of its cradle there we are so we've got those parts there and then we can also slide slide the actual barrel back out of there there we go we've got all these different parts which all go together to make up the um to make up the gun so we can prime all them get them painted and then get it all together obviously i'll do the technique i showed you with the tires as well although it's not going to work very well on these because we don't have much of an edge to work to so um in fact i may need to do it the other way around because it kind of looks as though there's no rim on there at all do you know i may actually stick these up on my lathe and turn a bit of a rim into there because that's not good at all not for painting I may just have to make a mask up Whatever, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. I'm going to use this Tamiya lacquer paint for a primer. We'll see how it works. This is the LP13, LP of which I've got loads of. This is the colour I used on the bottom of the new boat. So um, I've got loads of this, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, but I do want to get something under it, because this SCC2 mix, without something under it, it tends to be a bit sort of hollow. So um, there we go. And I've got all these bits of ammunition and... There's some tools here. We've got the uh, the hand wheels there. And there's this piece here. This piece here is number five. And I can't remember which screw it came off of. I will tell you. And then if you've built this kit, it's off of actually sprue B. There it is there. 
B5 and I cannot find that anywhere in the instructions where it goes. So if you know, let me know because I've still got it. So there we go. Um, in fact, by the time you see this, it will all be finished. There's no point in letting me know because it just won't be on there. So uh, there we go. I'll see you in a minute after it's primed. And there we go. All done, all primed. And um, this is with the Tamiya Lacquer Paint LP13. And I used this thinners here. This is the lacquer thinner retarder type. Uh, retarder just allows it to dry slower so it can settle. Um, it's it's wonderful stuff. It is very very smelly. It's very very bad for your health. You need a mask and ventilation and extraction and you know whatever. Um, but it is really really nice. You can see how fine it's gone down on here and how the, the details all popping through and everything. So. Um, yeah, it's certainly something I'll be looking at in future as a as a primer because it's a lacquer paint. It's going to go down well. It's going to shrink well onto the surface. It's it's um it's also going to show you any uh, faults you've got. You can see all these corner seams here that we talked about earlier with the, you know, the Mister Surfacer, and the cotton bud. You can see that it's given us the effect we want. So we've we've got no ledges, but we've kept all the detail. So that's all looking nice. If you look at the barrel, you can see we did the sanding. Um, we've got a slight witness here, and if you can make it out, if you can make it out there, there is a witness of the seam there. Okay, so we'll have to work on that. And the other side, it's all looking good. Certainly the actual firing end of the barrel is looking lovely. So, um, yeah, happy with all that really. I mean, I, I may do something with that. I may just put some dust over it when I weather it. You know, it's uh, that's the beauty of AFVs. You can... Um, you can go to town with your weathering and cover up all sorts of sins. Uh, we've got some work required on these lower joints down here, I think. Uh, I think I will go in and just do something with those. Because um, they are quite a prominent feature. They're sitting sort of here. So they are quite prominent. So I may put some more Mr. Surfacer in there and then just very, very gently sand it out. Um, but now we can see what we're doing there. We've got the primer on. That's the beauty of primer. A lot of people ask, why do you prime? One, it's a good key for the paint going over the top, especially if it's acrylics, which don't stick very well to plastic, particularly if you're using like Viejo or AK bottled paints. Um, you know, it ain't going to stick to plastic at all without a primer. So that's that's one thing. Uh, but also um, it does, if you use these grey colours or sometimes blacks, they tend to show you the errors, whereas you couldn't see that there in the like grey plastic. It will actually show you the error that you're looking for. So that's why I use primers. So um, I'll do some more work on that and then I'll come back and we'll get ready to start putting on this uh, SCC2 colour. So there we go, everything is uh, is done brown now in the SCC2 brown mix. I'm sorry, I should have written it down what it is. Um, if you go back to my video, way, way back, one of my first videos on the Scammel, um, I talked there about the paint mixes and what they are for this one and this one. Um, they're Tamiya colours mixed together. And uh, they're a very close representative of what the colours should be. Um, this one, the SSC1A, is a very, very dark brown, as you can see. Uh, and they did actually replace this around 43, I think. And they used the black. And there is a AK SC14, SCC14 blue black, which is almost like a sort of NATO black. It's a very, very dark grey. So, um... You could use that one. And I have seen some images of, um, I think it was a Sherman tank sprayed in this, this colour with that black put on it. And it was actually, it looked like it was sprayed on very, very thin. So you could see through it almost. It was a it, 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 very good effect. So uh, it looked really, really good. Well, on the subject of paint, uh, looking at these, um, these are all the weapons and blast bags or whatever you call them, I don't know. Nobody's responded and told me what they're called, but of course they won't have done because this is a one-part video. Um, but I'm not sure what these are called. But um, they're all sorts of different colours and stuff. And we can see here on the on the colour called out from um, from Thunder Models, they're referring to... I've got to stand up because I need to make sure you're not glossed out. There's no point talking about it if you're looking like that. They're referring to the Migamo colours. Okay, so, right, let's have a look here. They're talking about um, this shell here being 125 which is yellow okay that's absolutely fine and then this here this shell here is 088 which is khaki brown okay this one here is 047 which is satin white that's fine the shovel 
0.045, which is gun metal, okay, 036, old wood, 036, old wood, 037, it's shown as like a dark colour, but it's up here as new wood, which is like a tan colour. And then we come down here and we've got 111, which is the SSC2 colour. And then this 088 is khaki brown, which is probably the SSC2 colour. So, and then here they've got um, 111 again. You can see they're calling 111 here, 111 there, and they're two completely different colours. It's SSC2. So I don't know what they're talking about there. Um, and then we've got 047 here, which is satin white. 197 there is brass. So really, these colours here, you can sort of... I don't know, if somebody could... Well, it's too late because it's a one-part video. But if we look at the colours, they look right, they look good. But just ignore the numbers. Because I think this is probably like an olive drab sort of colour. Or like a khaki drab colour. Um, brass and white, yep. Yeah, you've got your wooden handles there. That on the end of there, I'm thinking that's going to be more sort of this SSC2 colour. It may even be um, wrapped in steel, I don't know. And then you've got the whites there. I'm going to use like a very light grey for them. Um, and then here, they're saying 111 SSC2, but they're showing them as more of like the SSC18. No, it's more like a, like a drab colour. So, um, a bit of research on that, I think. In fact, I think I'll leave these until after I finish building the gun and then you guys can tell me in the comments below what you think the um, the colours should be because th that's obviously a complete and utter cock up um, as you can see you've got here you've got 111 which is the SSC2 colour which is this and as you can see it's nothing like the colours being called out here especially that one there so um, we've got this option here which again is the 111 which is the SSC2 colour this is a stone grey. I've never seen this. Um, I'm not sure that it's actually even correct. I'm not sure. But this one here will be correct. So they're talking SSC1A here. And they're showing it as almost like a black colour. Well the SSC1A is, is like a very dark brown. Or you can use the black. So I'm going to use this one here because I've got it. So um, there we go. Um, so I need to get this sort of all camouflaged up now. And then we'll look at putting it all together. Okay, so looking at camouflage, um, first thing I want to show you for the newer modelers out there, something to be very careful of, and this is something that is not, this is not specific to Thunder models, it's not specific to MIG ammo, this is, happens a lot, a lot of kits do this, particularly aircraft, and you need to be very, very careful when you're looking at your camouflage patterns. Now I'm going to show you a couple of mistakes here that are, you know, that they could really catch you out. Now, if you look here at the side profiles of the gun, okay, I'm going to have to stand up so I can check you're not glossed out. But if you look at these side profiles, and bear in mind this part of the barrel mounting here, okay? So you've got no black on there. I'll call it black, it's actually a very dark brown. We've got no black on there, we've got no black on there. When we come to here, you can see they've got the black over it and they've got the black here. And then when you come to here, there's no black over there. When you look at the barrel here, Okay, so you look on the left hand side and it's quite narrow. We come over to here and it's wide. And here it's quite wide. And here it's, it's, it's probably about correct. Okay, now when you look here, where was it? You look here, this one looks okay. Okay, from the, the plan view and everything. And this one looks okay. But these two views here are completely utterly wrong. So be very, very careful when you do camouflage. Now I have done a little bit of research. Um, there, there's not a lot to be found of this actually. But what I have found, it looks like the camouflage is brush painted. So therefore it would have, a in real life, so therefore it would have had a hard edge. It wouldn't have been sprayed with a soft edge. So we need to mask it so we get a hard edge to spray it. Now the problem with doing that is when you come to doing the wheels, getting down in between those spokes with a hard edge, very difficult. Getting in between these rivets and over all this fine detail with a hard edge, very difficult. Now you can use some um, silly putty and stuff. I've got some here, this fun zone stuff. You can buy the dedicated modern stuff, but it's, it's all the same. And it's basically this, um, this putty stuff that 
forms you, you can lay it on it for and it'll form a shape now the problem with this stuff is it actually never actually sets so what it does it's constantly trying to level itself out so if you put it over this fine detail it will level itself out around that and when you pull it off you'll pull the detail off with it so you need to be very very careful with using that we could use you know your liquid masks like this one here we could use a misty masking but again you've got to peel it off and I'm not sure how it'll go with the uh, acrylic paint that's on there. So I'm going to brush paint it. In real life, it was brush painted. I'm going to brush paint this one. And if, if it looks bloody awful, then what we'll do is we'll go over with the airbrush afterwards and just stay away from the edges. So for this, I've got my SCC 1A mix, which is a mix of Tamiya paints. I've got my mixing tray here. And I've got a fairly soft brush. A lot of my brushes, I need to get a new set of brushes actually, but a lot of my brushes are knackered. This is an old humble brush, I think. Um, so a fairly soft brush. So I've, I've given this a good old shake. So I'm just going to get some of this paint out of here and put it in the mixing jug. Okay. So I'm going to clean the top of the jar off so we don't get the lid stuck on when we come to open it again. Okay, so that's that in there. Now, for the thinner, to make it thinner for brush painting, because Tamiya paint is not very good for brush painting, I've got this product here. I've got brown paint on my finger. This product here is uh, Modeler's World Leveling Thinner for Brush Painting. I have done a test with this. It's bloody awesome. Um, you just get some of this out with the, uh, with the included pipette. Okay, so I'm just thinning it down. It tells you to add one or two drops, I think, or something, but I'm actually just thinning it to my taste because you can go as thin as you like. And I'm going to get this thinned out like water and then we won't get any brush marks. So that's a nice thin mix there. I'm not going to say the consistency of milk because it's not right. But what we're looking for is maybe a little bit thinner than that. We're looking for it to be slightly opaque. Sorry, slightly translucent, should I say. So you can, when you pull it up the side, you can kind of see through it. There we go. I'm happy with that now. Right, so I'm just going to test this first in an inconspicuous area. Go in here just to see how it goes down. So let's just paint a bit under here. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Now you can see I've put it on fairly heavily, okay, and it will actually sort itself out. You, you, you'll see that in a minute, it will actually sort itself out. And believe it or not, this is Tamiya paint I'm brushing. And uh, Right, so let's get these here and have a look. They're sort of suggestions, what they're saying. So around this barrel, so around the back end of the barrel, it's coming down around there. In fact, what I'm going to do is, just, no, I, won't. I was going to assemble the barrel onto the carriage. We'll do that afterwards. So it's coming down the side here, up over the top, and then around. So we're going up over here, up over there, and then we're going to come around like this. Okay, and that'll do us fine. We don't need to follow the actual plans exactly. Just close will do. Because remember, these would have been, um, if they were hand-painted, there probably wouldn't have been any schedule for it. Just, I mean, I did see one of the other type, this type here, okay, with this light grey camouflage underneath. And then they'd actually put some, what looked like, black paint hatches all over it, like it was, like, chevrons almost. Um, so, yeah, now this is going to go forward onto the barrel. Okay, so we're going to come up here. Over there, and then I'm going to come down the other side like that. There we go. And as I say, this will actually all level out and it will look good. Because the paint's so thin, it's capillaring along that edge there, like we did when we painted the tyres. So we need to be a little bit careful. I'm going to come up there as well. You can see it's drying fairly quickly, which is good. And it's also covering very well because it hasn't, to be fair, it hasn't really got much of a job to do as it covering because it's very similar color. You can see we're brushing it on, we're not getting brush marks. 
it's not tearing up the old original paint like it would if it was it didn't have this chemical in it which is something Tammy are renowned for their brush paints they're awful for brush painting and there we go so that's that done so we'll leave that to dry for a minute we'll do a little bit of something else um, I should do a wheel let's do a wheel okay so look at the wheels they just got this one here it's got a going around like this we're going to go along that spoke up over the hub around so we'll paint all that in there and then we're going to come around here and up onto there like so in fact to make it a bit interesting we'll go onto the backing there as well there we are Okay, just brush that in there job done oh, the other thing I was looking at you know I said about these wheels not being very accurate it looks like the wheels are okay it looks like it's the um, the image on the front of the box that's incorrect with all those extra rivets on the wheel rim so I take that back it looks like the actual artwork is incorrect and the plastic parts look to be good Here we go. So if you can see what the paint capillary around the rim there, so I'm just going to let that dry off a little bit. I'm going to clean some of the excess paint off the brush and I'm going to take my camouflage up to where it's capillary round so it looks, so it doesn't look daft. There we go. Get rid of those bubbles. And there we go. Happy with that. Okay, and then we'll do the other one. We'll see how this looks. As you can see, it's slightly opaque. It's going to need another coat. What we'll do is we'll thin it more. We'll give it another coat once it's dry. Uh, what we're doing now we're going to do some around there are we so we're coming <laughs> okay so I'm just going to have to do my own pattern here so I'm going to come over like this and then down the other side and then let this come over and meet there and then here I'm going to come up there down there just like so that'll do us okay if you notice I'm trying to stay away from the edges so it doesn't go pillory along there because that looks a bit bit rubbish all right so there's that one there done so we'll do another wheel and then we'll uh, and then i'll do the rest off camera so i'm going to come across the center like this up here up there and i'm going to come across like that and then i'm going to go like this down there and make that go across there and have a thinner line on that side Okay, and I'm, I'm expecting the paint to capillary, so we'll be ready for that. But yeah, this this product, this is this it's this stuff here. This modeler's modeler's rule leveling thinner for brush painting is what's making this possible. Um, you would not be able to do this with Tamiya paint 
straight out of the bottle. They do their own um, retarder, which makes it a lot nicer to brush. But, um, and I've never tried it. I've seen it used. I'm not even sure if it's available readily in the UK. Maybe not in the US either. I'm going to dry the brush off. Just pull that up there. And if we get any more capillary action now, we'll have to cover it up with a wash. Again, that's the beauty of armor modeling. You can cover. You can cover any little errors like stuff like that up with a with a wash. Doesn't make it any easier. But um, you know, if it was an engine we were painting on a scale model car, and we had you know different color paints capillary into others, then we would have to sort it out. Whereas with, with a military vehicle or whatever, you don't have to worry about it so much. So there we go. That's that one done. You can see that one there that dry. So um. We'll call that a day there for um for this little segment and then i'll come back when it's all done on now we've done the tires put it all together got all that camouflage brush painted and i must say i'm really happy with the way it's come out we've got this kind of blotchy look to it you can see on here which i'm really pleased about it actually looks brush painted which is kind of the effect on white i mentioned earlier about this sherman tank i saw where you can see it was brush painted and if you look at some of the images or certainly on some of the box arts they've got this kind of I don't know poorly applied paint scheme if you like and that's kind of what I was after the other thing I've done is I've continued it down here and everything got everything sort of matching up but um, I think what you have to do is put yourself in the frame of mind of the guy that would have done this and I'm assuming it would have been done in the field um, I could well be wrong but uh, let's just say it was delivered in this SCC2 color this brown color and then they applied this this in the field you know or even in a factory a guy with a brush is whacking this on you know, and he's not going to worry about going down in there behind the barrel and everything. Um, but he will sort of probably continue down with the same sort of lines down the whole thing. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with how that looks. So what I've got to do now is get this all together. I did the tyres. Now, masking up these wheels is a nightmare because there's not really um, a rim. What you've got is that, if I can try and show you close up, you've got the... The rim, there's a step, but then there's like a, the tire comes down and it just sort of comes down and then it's flat where the edge of the wheel rim is and there's no line to work to or anything. So uh, all I've done is made these these discs out of masking tape using the circle cutter and just roughly mask them. So we'll have to get some mud and dust on there to sort of cover up that area, but there's no definite rim there. The only line you've got is going in, which makes it look like the tire is actually fatter than the rim, which won't be correct. So, um... So yeah, that, that's a bit of a letdown. As with, as I said before, as with all these mirror models, all the Thunder models um, kits, it's, the kits are wonderful, but the wheels always seem to be the issue. Of, if there's going to be an issue with the model, it's in the wheels. So um, there we go. So I need to get all this together now, and then we can get a, a, a coat of something on there to see that. Whether I go straight for a matte varnish, I don't know. I need to get this aiming mechanism bit on there and get that all painted. And then uh, and then go from there. So I'll see you back in a sec. Okay, nearly there now. Just want to show you something. Um, there's been some talk about this extra thin quick setting, and in my opinion, this is what it's for. Now, if I use ordinary extra thin on here, I put a drop in there, put it on, and it's kind of it'll move around for ages. Whereas with this quick setting, it's almost like using super glue. You put a quite a large drop on because it evaporates so fast, and then you just come in here with a and just get it in position like oh dear like so and that's it it's on um just do the other one here again put a large drop in there no good doing it like this because it just you can watch it just dry out it, it needs to be a, a fairly large drop because by the time you get it to the model half of it will have evaporated and then that can go on like that, just like so. Get it all squared up. Get it all squared up on the shaft so that it's um, it's perpendicular to the actual shaft it's on. There we go. And then this one here, we do the same. And that and that's the beauty of it. Now the trouble is with this glue; it's so hot. If you use it for putting tiny parts on, 
if you go back in and put another drop in they fall off because it just eats itself so um that's what i find it for that's what i find it useful for and you can come back to them in in a couple of minutes and they'll be solid they'll be good enough hard enough you know to paint because it dries that quickly the other thing i've noticed from this kit that it needs to be done is the this here this aiming mechanism has a triangular guard on it if you remember i cut some material away from the mounting here to get it further in but it's still almost touching the tire so i've just taken the corner off of the um off of the guard there and and it's just it, it, i don't think there's much you can do about it i may have made a mistake I, I probably have in fact but um that's what i've had to do to get around it so i'm actually touching all this a bit too soon after that brown paint went on because i'm leaving kind of finger marks in it but uh not to worry it's hardly a a 200 scale airliner is it so there we are that's them all on there nice and true nice and square to their shafts and everything job done so i need to go around now touch up the brown paint and we'll go from there and there we go guys it is uh pretty much done um and you can see i've got the the scammel chassis there with the wheels just placed on uh, you can see the gun on the back. If you ever see one of these scammels, you'll know just how huge they are. And it's made me realise just how huge this thing is. I mean, those wheels, they must be nearly six foot tall. Um, because I'm guessing a 35th scale figure is, is about that, that big. Yeah. So this thing must be bloody huge. Um, I don't know, it's out of scale. It's like it's 16th scale, and that's 35th. But anyway, um, there it is on the back of the chassis. Just so you can see how, how it looks. And uh, yeah, really, really impressive. Um, really lovely little model. Actually. Okay then guys, so there it is. It's had a, a, a gloss coat and I used um, Alclad Aqua Gloss. And let that go off for about four or five hours. And then I've gone over it with an oil wash. Now this is the Modeler's World oil wash. You, you can get it from Premium Hobbies. Um, I've got a few of them here and they do a lovely lovely range and they're they're really good they come with a, a shaker they come with a there we go they come with a ball and a bottle so you can get them really nicely agitated and there's all sorts of different colors and then they also do the um the uh, odorless thinners and cleaner there and it's the nice thing somebody was asking me about the other day in, in an email about oil washes and the nice thing about these is they are um they are indeed oil washes but as we all know, uh, turpentine, odorless thinners, enamel paints and all that, um, not odorless thinners, but enamel thinners and everything, it can be quite smelly. And this stuff has a smell to it, a very slight smell, but it's a very sweet smell. It's nothing, it's nothing like your normal sort of, um, your odorless thinners that you will smell as industrial dirt there, which is a great colour. It's very much like Starship Filth. Um, so they are very, very good. And, and I... I use them all the time now. Uh, you can obviously make your own. You, you can get oil paints and mix them with something like this and, th and thin them down yourself. You can take these and thin them further with this and make a filter, uh, which I'll put a filter over here after it's all done. But um, this is as far as I'm going to go with this now, because as I said, this is going to be going on the back of the R100. So I want to basically finish them both the same. Now, what I would normally do now is give this a, a, a matte coat uh, to, to dull it down but I'm not going to do that because um, I may wish to do some more washes and streaking and staining and stuff which is so much easier to do on a gloss coat if you have a matte coat and you start using oils and stuff on there it can be quite difficult to get it off because obviously with a matte finish um, it tends to be a little bit more shall we say porous so the the effects you put on there, like if I put a blob of oil paint there now where it's glossy, um, I could come in there tomorrow with a cotton bud with a with a you know dampened like this with a little bit of thinners on it or a little bit of um you know um odorless thinners on it and just wipe it off it'd be gone in seconds. Whereas if it was a matte, you'd have to scrub away and you may well actually rub through the paint. You need to be careful. So um, that's what I've done. But just to give you a good look at it, um, I'll come in a bit closer. And then you can look at some of the detail. It is a lovely, lovely model. You can see we've got all the rivet detail around here. And um, all the all the corners are looking lovely. There's all that detail there on that um, on that foot plate, which is lovely. Um, 
and and the barrel itself has, has come out really really nicely if you remember there was a seam down both sides the wheels i think look look bloody great with a bit of a wash in there just it, all this is doing is just a bit of artistic license just to highlight everything and uh, you can see the same down in there there's all the rivet detail down in there and there as well and i've just noticed there i've got a you see this is what i'm talking about i've got a if you look here right where the cotton bud is pointing to you can see there's a build up there of black oil which i don't like so i'm just gonna rub it off and there we go now this 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 cotton bud is literally slightly damp but you can see i can just rub it off because i don't want it there and that's the uh, that's the beauty of using these oil washes or any oil washes really but um there we go so all i've done there is just use the black to to get some kind of a a kind of you know make the rivets pop get get all the, everything just make it all look a bit sort of used and stuff and as i say when i when i finish the r100 and i put this on the back then i'll weather it then so that's been that guys um one video um start to finish you all said i wouldn't do it um i know i don't finish a lot but uh thought you know i'll give it a go and see how it works out so there we go I, I know it's not truly finished because i haven't properly weathered it but um as i say as i said earlier there's no point in giving this sort of dusty sand colored streaks everywhere and having your 100 plastered in mud that just wouldn't happen so um thanks for watching i hope you've enjoyed it it's been a quite a long one i hope you've learned something from it but um it's a, it's a lovely little bill it's not really much of a weekend bill because it's quite fiddly and you've got all these seams and everything down here but as with all of the mirror models or the thunder models they are stunning kits they need a bit of work um you're not gonna you're not gonna throw them together but um they are you know really sort of models for modelers but they do finish up a stunning detail beautiful scale detail and uh, really really nice believe me once this has had some dust on it and some pigments and you know a bit of rust and chipping and stuff it's going to look absolutely stunning it really will be not because of me i'm not blowing my own trumpet just because it's such a lovely model hope you enjoyed it guys thanks for watching stay safe and i'll see you all soon bye for now